Hi, in the next few videos, we're gonna talk about the electronic structure of atoms. Our first topic is gonna to be the Bohr model. The Bohr model was one of the first models to predict how different subatomic particles were arranged to form an atom. Niels Bohr came up with a model that protons and neutrons are located within the nucleus that are at the center of the atom, and around the nucleus are electrons that are following circular orbits around the nucleus. Now, as we're going to discuss, the Bohr model was ultimately wrong, but there are several key aspects of the Bohr model that helped us to develop the current prevailing model. So with the Bohr model, aside from the fact that the electrons follow circular orbits around the nucleus, an additional detail is that these orbits are located at fixed distances away from the nucleus. And each of these orbits are called energy levels or shells. And there's a few key aspects. Number one, the energy of these shells increase as you move away from the nucleus. That means the first shell, the one closest to the nucleus, is the lowest in energy. And as you move away from the nucleus, the energy of each shell increases. The second important part of these shells is that they get progressively closer together as you move away from the nucleus. So what that means is if you look at the gap between the first shell and the second shell, it's a pretty large gap. But the gap between the second and the third shell is smaller, and the gap between the third and fourth shell is even smaller. So that also means that energy gaps, the difference in energies between consecutive shells, decreases as you move away from the nucleus. Finally, these energy levels or shells have energies that are quantized, which means in order for an electron to reside in one of these energy levels or shells, they have to have a precise amount of energy, hence quantized. And at the same time, it's not possible for electrons to reside anywhere on the atom except on one of these orbits. That means the electrons can't be residing anywhere between the orbits. They have to be on one of these orbits. All right. Now, one last thing also important from MCAT is that the way we refer to these different energy levels or shells, we do that using the principal quantum number n. n you're probably familiar with, and again, the counting just starts from the nucleus. So the n equals one shell is the shell closest to the nucleus. Then you have the n equals two, three, four, and so forth as you move away from the nucleus. Now, as you can see in this diagram, we have an electron that's currently residing in the n equals one shell. Electrons don't always have to stay within the same shell. It's possible for them to move from one shell to the other. And these are processes called excitation and relaxation. In excitation, an electron is going to be able to move from a lower energy level slash shell to a higher energy level slash shell. In order for this process to occur, the electron has to absorb a photon. And that makes sense because at a lower energy shell, you have less energy than at a higher energy shell. So you must absorb energy to move up to a higher level. Now, as it turns out, you can't absorb any photon. So there's actually many photons that will not work. You have to use a photon with an energy equal to the exact difference in energies between the two shells that you're trying to move from. So that would mean, for instance, if our n equals one shell has 500 joules of energy, and we're trying to move into the n equals two shell with 900 joules of energy, you have to absorb a photon with exactly 400 joules of energy. You can't use something with 399 joules, that's not enough. You can't use something with 401 joules, that's too much. It has to be equal to the precise difference in energies between these two levels. So in that case, if you do absorb the right amount of energy, we can throw ahead and draw in a photon here, which we're gonna denote by the squiggly line, and HV, which we use to denote a photon, and then our electron is able to move up to that next energy level, the n equals two shell. Now, another thing I wanna mention is, here we did move from the first shell to the second shell. It's possible for you to move more than one shell. So again, if you absorb the exact amount of energy equal to the difference in energies between the first and the third shell, you can just move straight from n equals one to n equals three. All right. Um, one last thing to state about this process is at the beginning when the electron was at the lowest energy level, 
we said that uh, we call the electron to be at its ground state, its lowest energy state. Once the electron absorbs energy and moves up to a higher energy state, it's now in what we call an excited state. Now, the excited state, because it has more energy than the ground state, is intrinsically less stable. So because that electron at that second energy level is less stable, it will have a tendency of spontaneously undergoing relaxation. Relaxation is the process by which an electron in the excited state will spontaneously move from a higher energy level to a lower energy level by emitting a photon. So in many ways, it's really just the opposite of excitation. And again, when you relax and emit the photon, the photon that you emit is going to have an energy equal to the exact difference in energies between the two shells that you just moved from. So that means in this case, our electrons in the second shell, it can go ahead and relax and move down to the first shell. And in doing so, a photon is going to be emitted and the energy of that photon is going to be the same exact energy as the photon that we used in the first place to move from that first level to the second level. All right, and the last thing I wanna mention is just, uh, it's a very gl large global concept really within all of science that's just for you to, good for you to keep in mind, and that is energy is inversely related to stability. That explained why when the electron got excited and moved up to that higher energy level, it spontaneously relaxed and moved back down to that lower energy level. This concept applies here, but it's also going to apply to many other topics we're going to discuss.